Hey, there we go. Server side development and rock and roll. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh. Morning, everyone. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. My turn to talk now. Okay. Time for software. Can you hear me? I'm going to start. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. 1985, the CEO of Hilton North America came to a visit to Seoul, South Korea. Enters one of the hotel, funniest one, and the receptionist says, welcome to our hotel, sir. After a few months, he returned with his wife this time. Enter the same hotel, different receptionist, then she said, welcome back to our hotel. So he was in shock. They recognized him. He didn't give any IDs, no registrations, so the experience was overwhelming. So he turned back to his office and then he got all the advisor to understand how they should do it. So it was 1985 and facial recognition was the only solution, but it was too pricey. So before paying the bill, he called the CEO of the other hotel and this guy said, oh, we just have a deal with the local taxi drivers. <clears throat> They're just asking if this is the first time in the hotel, and if yes, they're putting the luggage on the left, otherwise on the right, and it just costs us less than half a dollar. So what is the lesson learned here? Okay, it's not just technologies all the time. We are the technological people, we are rushing to adopt all kinds of new shining things, but sometimes it's something in between. And besides that, sometimes we have the best technology, but we are not being able to utilize them or the, and the best. So. What I will try to do in this session is to go through all the things that we've done in order to be able to visualize uh, 300 terrors in less than five seconds and main techniques in different areas. So, hello, <coughs> my name is Yaniv. Sorry, I got a call a little bit this night. Uh, so, my name is Yaniv Shalev. I'm the CTO of Convertro and also the site lead of AOL Israel. So, what is the connection between AOL and Convertro? So, AOL is still alive even more than that. Um, so AOL bought a Convertor, acquired Convertor two years ago for $101 million. And what Convertor does is helping marketers to optimize their marketing spend. Okay, so we are looking on user level data from different kinds of sources. If it's the digital arena, uh, those who are coming from EdTech, so we have a video display, mobile, social, whatever, affiliation and such. But the interesting stuff is on the f uh, physical, on the offline side. So we are also collecting data from TV, radio, billboards, uh, cashiers, uh, brochures, catalogs, and more and more. And besides that, we are also taking into account all kind of external, uh, external factors like uh, weather, economy, uh, competitive intelligence and such, and getting everything to get a one unified consistent insights. So this is what we are doing. So we have to know how to visualize data so fast, right? Okay, so <clears throat> the first tips and techniques will be around technology. So the first decision that we've done is to migrate from MySQL to Vertica. Who is working with Vertica here? Okay, not so many. Um, so why? Because most of the analytics part is involving with a lot of sorting. Right, and sorting the complexity of sorting is n long n. So instead of investing it every time on the query time, let's do it when we are pushing the data into the database. So if we have a database that know how to store the data in a sorted order, when given that we know what kind of question are we going to have on this data, okay, so now we can actually, all kind of very complex algorithm can be uh, linear of n complexity, which is pretty cool, right? So, yeah. But the thing is that maybe Vertica will not be very good with the uh, real-time data because we're investing so much when inserting the data into the system. So after we did it, we were very happy. Uh, maybe you could ask yourself how we are being able to afford, we were a small startup, how we could afford such an expensive uh, uh, equipment technology. Okay, so the answer is that uh, Bessemer invested in Convertro and uh, Vertica, so we were design partners. So. They were awesome prices, uh, but even today they have community edition, so whoever wants to uh, deal with it, so I think it's a great technology. So we thought that everything is over, our life is going to be great, and we found ourselves in this situation. Okay, I'm taking also dogs' uh, pictures. Uh, it was a mess. 
it was a mess because we were have so many different uh, consumers, different types of usage. We have all, sorry, yeah. We have uh, the, uh, we have reporting, we have dashboard, we have all, all kind of data scientists, so everything was a mess. And by the way, MPP, MPPs, Massive Parallel Processing Databases, are not very good with resource allocations. Okay, so we decided to shard, physically shard this hairy audacious big vertica into two. The upper one will be for the playground. This will be operational one. And the next one is going to be uh, the one for the dashboard where we have to commit to return results in less than five seconds. By the way, if you have any questions, feel free to ask now. I'd rather to be it interactive if you want, and if not, uh, so at the end. Uh, so this was the start. We gained a lot. We were being able to optimize, so we have different uh, databases. One thing that may be a question that can raise here, okay, so what about consistency? Okay, how the results in the upper one and the uh, lower one are going to be consistent and equal to each other? But I decided not to talk about the hard things now. Uh, so maybe afterwards, uh, catch me and I will explain. So <clears throat> afterwards, we understood that we have different types of data. So we have the analytical one, this is on the above, okay, where we have to crunch a lot, we have to run our data models, this is very heavy, it takes time, uh, it's a lot of data. But on the other hand, we have all the real-time metrics, which is also viable, right? Uh, all kind of uh, number of visits, number of impression, all kind of um, calculation on top of them. So we ask ourselves whether to put everything in Vertica, but as I showed you before, Vertica is not very good right, with real-time, maybe small batches, but not real-time. So whether we should put everything and maybe violate all kind of patterns that uh, Vertica is built on, or whether to differentiate between two different databases. So we decided to go with uh, the best technology that we thought at this time. Okay, so you can see here that there is a stream of speed layer uh, below with Kafka and Elasticsearch, because those technologies are very adequate for real-time data. Whereas I said before, Vertica is not. So, by the way, someone knows what is the name of this architecture pattern? Someone? L Lambda architecture, right. So, now is a quiz. The people who know what Lambda is, who invented Lambda architecture? Okay, I'll leave it to the end. I hope it will be intriguing enough, uh, but I will answer, I promise. Um, so, we have different kind of technologies, right? <coughs> Uh, we have here all the data sources, we have Hadoop, Vertica, MySQL, all kind of third parties, Elasticsearch. Uh, we have all kind of data manipulation that we have to do, okay? Aggregation, uh, data models, sorting, ranking, whatever. And we have different and many, many consumers, okay? We have the data scientist, we have the dashboard, uh, we have the reports. So the question is, where we should put all this logic? And what happens if I have the same business logic that is being shared between the data scientist and the dashboard, or the reporting and the dashboard? So the question, if I have to replicate the logic between all the consumers, so for example, to create a logic inside our, our reporting engine and one for the dashboard, or should I consolidate, right? So we decided at this point, to create a layer, a smart layer between the data sources and the consumer. This is the Hydro part. So a Hydro is a very smart data layer that sits between your sources and your consumers. And it helps you to optimize and extract data from different kinds of data sources. It helps you to create all kinds of stream manipulations. It helps you to do all kinds of uh, logics on top of them and to share the logic. So if you created a topology that you want to share afterwards with another kind of computation, so you don't have to work twice. You can do all kinds of optimization. You can have a caching that need to be done when you are, want to visualize so much data in such a um, amount of time. And it's modular and it's pluggable, meaning that you can write any kind of driver that you want and it's an open source. So if someone wants, this is how we are doing our stuff. So just come to me afterwards or just look for Hydro uh, by AOL. Okay, any questions till now? Cool, so let's talk about data. <clears throat> we talked about technology, but why data is so important? Data is important because those technologies are built on data and data structure. So if you not know how they are being built on, 
Okay, so you violate, all, again, all kind of pattern, and you will not be able to utilize those technologies at their best. So the thing with data that you have to remember is that you're trying all the time, when you want all the time, especially with analytics, to minimize the amount of IOs that you're doing and the amount of processing. So you saw before the sorting thing that I've done when pushing the data into the system minimize the processing time, right? Because I don't have to invest in uh, sorting. And let's see all kind of data structure that supports those paradigms. So the first one is partitioning. Who knows what it's partitioning? It's easy. Hadoop is working with partition. Everybody works with partition, all kind of databases. So partitioning is splitting your data to different kind of data objects. It can be files, it can be databases, it can be all kind of store, whatever. Okay, and it's like a drawer, which means that when you have a question, you know exactly which drawer to open. Okay, so let's say that you have a, a system with many clients, a multi-tenant system, and you want to show analytics per client. So it doesn't make sense to open all the drawers. You just want to open the, I don't know, the middle one or whatever that contains the data. So it saves you a lot of I/O, right? So this, by the way, uh, this kind of partitioning is being called horizontal partitioning. But there's another one. There's a vertical partitioning. So vertical partitioning, if horizontal partitioning is like a drawer, so vertical partitioning is like the divider inside a drawer. So now, let's assume that your question, when you know what is uh, the question on your data, so maybe there are some certain columns and fields that are being queried together. So why not create, again, even smaller physical data object that will contain this data for your usage, okay? So this is, by the way, why Vertica is being called Vertica, because it's vertical partitioning, and they're taking it for the extent, because what they are doing is partitioning, vertical partitioning the data per column. This is, by the way, what every column stores mostly do, okay? They are just building the data structure to support analytics, because in analytics, you're not querying all the record. You're just querying part of the uh, columns there. Cool, okay, so you saw that um, partitioning most of the time is handling with optimizing your storage. Where sorting, we said before, is optimizing your processing time. Okay, so now you can see how you can accelerate the way that you are working. But very fascinating for some sophisticated system can actually lever leverage from the sorting. Because if your storage engine know what is the sorting of your, uh, of your data, you can get a very high uh, compression rate, sometimes between four, five, even more order of magnitude than uh, the original data, which is very, very impressive. So at the end, you're scanning very, very uh, um, uh, low, small amount of data. Okay, and the last one is clustering. What is clustering? Okay, other name could be locality. So just imagine that you have two elements of data that you want to create together, let's say, uh, a user and its activities. Okay, so user have its own dimensions, age, gender, whatever, but the activity, what this user has been done in the last X month, okay, and you want to query them together. So why not putting them together in the same place? And by the way, we have many, many databases that are working in this way. MongoDB, the notorious, or maybe not, uh, I didn't say that, uh, but many other uh, sorted key value store, like Cassandra, HBS, whatever, okay, they're using all kind of clustering to be able to retrieve the data very fast. But even in the RDBMS world, the relational world, okay, you can achieve uh, clustering. You can achieve it by pre-joining two tables together and create one bigger table, which is very optimized for reading, but this again, you get the same thing. You did the locality of two data elements, sometimes with one to many relationship, putting them together, okay? And okay, I showed you all many data structure and technologies, but at the end, you can create a coherent experience. You don't have to compromise about, you know, where you take your data, you just have to do it right. So you can see here that on the right, we have Vertica, Above, you can see Elasticsearch that are giving all kind of online metrics. We can have MySQL for all kind of recommendations. We have pandas to generate on the fly models. You can see different sources. You can get a one coherent you know, experience. Again, a question, a very uh, legit one will be about consistency between them. But again, this is a hard problem to answer now. And I don't, I don't want to deal with it. Okay, I'm kidding. Uh, okay. So the last thing is let's talk about UX and UI, 
okay? Why we should care? We are a technological people, okay? It's not our realm. And who is this guy? This is your product, right? They want everything in real time, right? Flexible, they want many dimension, they want to change everything, like, right? They're like uh, kids in candy stores. And everybody who has kids know what happens when your kid is eating too much candies, right? They want more. So we have to train them, okay? We have to train them about trade-offs that has to be made. What is the cost? What is the value? Does it make sense to do all kinds of requirements? Because when we're trying to optimize too many, many things, at the end you're losing and not doing anything, right? So some trade-off is not all of them. Okay, one trade-off that I said before, we have to retrieve the data in less than five seconds. Okay, others can be around dimensions. How many dimensions do we want to support? Five, 10, 15, there's not a right or wrong answer, it's just, again, a matter of cost and value that people are going to get. So, if you want to have many dimensions, so maybe you have to create a lot of pre-processing, and the more dimensions you add, this is an exponential, a combinatorical problem, okay? So pre-processing of so many dimensions and preparing for any kind of uh, questions costs a lot, and you have to be very mindful about it. Everybody that deal with those kind of systems may be nodding because this is a very hard problem. And how many dimensions are for the, out of the agreed dimension are you aligned to fetch? There is a reason why Google Analytics just give you two dimensions to pick out of six or seven in Google Analytics. Because this is how they can commit to the SLA, to retrieval time. This is why the uh, sampling algorithm and extrapolation works well because they are not getting into what is being called the curse of dimensionality when you have too many dimensions. So you have to the compromise about the number of dimensions and sometimes more is less. Granularity is also uh, a trade-off that has to be, uh, you have to be thinking of. Because what is the level that your data has to be? Are we uh, like showing raw data? Or, and then all the aggregation will be on the fly when query is being made, or you want to pre-process and to create a high level of uh, aggregation where you want to do it. Just imagine that now you have a, uh, a user that query your data and he wants to pick age, um, for example, gender and zip code. Let's say it's North America, so so many records will be returned to the screen. Nobody can do nothing something with so many records. So the next thing that this user will do, aggregate the records by DMA or country. Okay, so here you can see that granularity is super important. And again, if you want to be optimized for returning uh, 300 tails in less than five seconds, you want to understand what are the aggregation and what is the level of granularity that you want to support. And the last thing is freshness. Okay, do you need real-time data? Really? It's cool, it's sexy, but is it smart? You can be sexy and smart also, but again, you have to pay for it. So, because all kind of, uh, um, you know, real time and streaming uh, um, architecture and platform costs a lot and it has all kind of complexity in its side. Whoop. Sorry. With a flat, I have to call her to say that I will not make it today. Um, yeah, so you can see that it's super important to, to understand where to choose. And sometimes, sometimes I mean, you have, even if you show like a real-time metrics, it's even making inconsistency with the uh, slow data that will come afterwards. So sometimes, again, real-time is good, but maybe you can skip it and make lower your prices and make more with your technologies. Um, and the last point that I wanted to mention here, especially about UX, that you can actually make time. Bech. It's been stuck. Okay. You can actually make time. What it means by making time? It means that if you analyze how user, if you analyze how, again, first you're building your system and the experience, and second, how people are using your platform, you can see that maybe the first page, the first step, okay, this is where you have to return things in less than five seconds, okay? You have to do all the aggregation that are needed. You have to work very hard for that. Maybe it will be like very low, uh, very high level, okay? Not very detailed, but something that have to be returned very fast and 
also create a value. But then you analyze and you saw that 80% of your user, it takes them like 10 seconds to move to the second page. They are drilling, they have the same context. So now actually you have 15 seconds to prepare the data, or even more, 20 seconds. It's a lot. You can see now that if you're analyzing the experience that you want to create, you can actually create a perceived performance and walk and do all kind of stuff behind the scene. So now there are all kind of constraints that maybe can be a little loose and you do not have to invest so much money of and too many server that most of the time we don't do uh, anything. Okay, uh, for example, the second to the third step, okay, you have the same, uh, you might have different kind of um, charts, but the same data, so why not cache the data between them? So you can see that if you analyze correctly everything, okay, you can create in the great experience and have enough time to generate the data be, uh, behind the scene. Okay, so I hope that I was convincing enough, uh, but there is something which was very wrong about what I was telling, telling you, especially about the presentation. I hope that I was convincing, but it's wrong the way that I did it. Can you tell why? Okay, so I had all kind of assumptions. You are pretty tired today. Okay, so uh, yeah, so all the time that I go, I went through the presentation, I had all kind of assumptions that I knew before what is going to be the questions, that I know what the data structure that are going to support me. This is not the right way to go because in that way you will not be able uh, to optimize and to utilize the most from your technologies. So the best way of doing it is start from the happy guy uh, with the requirements and then to understand what is the experience that you want to create, what is the UI that you want to gain, the flow that I showed before, how you're going to gain time. Now this is the time to, ch to choose the data structures that are going to support it. And then choose the technologies that are going to support those data structures. This is the right way and the most efficient way to get to what uh, you want. So. That's all. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any question, I will be happy to answer. You didn't ask me. Yeah. There is one issue in the design and having this approach of going into this first mm -hmm. technology. At the end, eventually it might create fragmentation of the current stuff. And yes, this is the best technology for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, it's, it's, so you have a lot of technologies and sometimes the requirements are not perfectly adequate to each of each and you may, might end up with too many technologies. This is a correct one. Uh, so this is a trade-off again, question that you want to, to ask yourself. Maybe uh, you will pick those technologies and make sure afterward that you have a consistency. Maybe you can solve something with a little bit different approach on the UI that will help you to utilize technologies that you already have. So I don't have an answer. And it doesn't mean that you have to wait for all the requirements to fly in and then just then to start. It can be in the MVP approach. But it says to go, you know, not the MVP should not just, you know, limit it to the technology. It should be, you know, with all the layers from the UX to, uh, to the technology. And in that way, you'll be able to uh, reiterate and refactor if needed. Other questions? You didn't ask me about who invented the Lambda architecture. So it's not Nathan Martz. This is for sure. Between the two others, Ralph Kimball and Billy Imon, this is a fight for long years who invented the data warehouse. But we've been doing Lambda architecture, and I was doing in 2004. But Nathan Martz did it in much more elegant, I would say, and sexy way with the storm. So yeah, you can uh, look for it afterwards. Uh, thank you very much.